Well, hi, and welcome to my shop, and uh, thanks for joining me here. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at a uh, really beautiful radio called a Simplex. And here's here's a better shot of what it really looks like. Look at that, eh? It's a fantastic looking radio. See how the cabinet curves on this one side, and this side is much sharper curve. And then it has all this uh, interesting patterning in here. And this is cut out in, a, in a, an unusual shape. It makes the whole radio really attractive. It has uh, its original knobs here. I'm going to guess a couple of them have been swapped here, maybe. Maybe these two. And it's in, basically, it's, it's, it's in great shape. It's, it's really, uh, it's really solid. Yeah, fantastic. So it's, yeah, the cloth is in good shape. Wonderful. Let's look at the back. So right away, and it certainly is nothing original about this cord here. This obviously is the antenna, antenna wire. And let's see what we can read on the back here. There's a sticker right here, so let, let's take a closer look at it and see what we can see here. Licensed under patents of the General Electric Company, the Radio Corporation of America, on the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company, and associated companies only for radio, amateur, experimental, broadcast, reception. What? 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 What's that say there? and associated companies only for radio amateur experimental and broadcast reception oh those, those are two separate things experimental so radio amateur experimental is, everything that radio amateurs do is considered experimental and broadcast reception would be uh, just a regular AM band so that, that's all it is I'm just getting a little carried away there so let's take a close look while we got the camera up here There's a real interesting uh, can on this tube. Obviously shaped just like the tube. Look at that, it covers it right up. Wow. Okay, one of these is a rectifier tube. I, and I can't be sure. This one looks like a rectifier tube here. This one. Yeah, for sure. That's the rectifier tube. It's got a, uh, these wires are coming up to a, a magic eye. What's, uh, what's that? What's that bear thing going on there? Well, that's a resistor sticking out, sticking out of there. And there's a little crack or broken part. Uh, it's common for there to be, be a resistor up in, in one of these things, but sticking out like that's a little odd, especially with the, with the wire there. Oh, the whole thing's loose. Hmm. See when we get it right out of the cabinet. Now, oh. the speaker's in fantastic condition. Oh, look at this. Somebody's bolting on a uh, transformer. Uh, 
that's pretty curious. Now, that transformer looks much older than the uh, speaker. So I think this has got a new speaker on it. And just exactly why it has that output transformer, um, well, it could be it's the one from the old speaker. It's possible. Can't see the wires. There. Well, maybe I can if I just turn the camera. Hey, the magic of video here. I can see things with the camera I cannot possibly see with my eye. So there's the... Uh, Aim this okay. Whoop. Uh, you can just see where the leads are connected to the output of the transformer there. Nothing spectacular about any of that, but I'm pretty sure that's a that's a repair of some sort. Of course a speaker's on a plug here. That's great. That's good. And let's see. Uh, up front we've got light there. There's the string and the spring, so I didn't even try turning the dial on this yet. There's another light down there. Very good. Two IF cans and uh, a couple more tubes with grid caps. Keep that in mind. I tend when I get the radio turned upside down to forget that there's grid caps on these tubes once I have it out for work. Well, it looks like it's in great shape. For all I know, you could turn this thing on, especially with this cord here. Especially with the cord like that. So... I think that's probably a smart move, myself. Turning it on. At this point. Another smart move. Get that small camera to go in, go in small places. See what it can see. Get some consistent lighting going here. There we go. Now there's some new capacitors right there. That's, that looks pretty new. That doesn't. Hmm. Uh, doesn't look particularly new. Oh. That certainly doesn't look new. Uh, well, we can't see too much more. That's a curious thing sitting right there. <laughs> what is that? That's a capacitor and the, the second lead is just hard to spot. Oh, <laughs> really hard to spot. But it's back there. I see it back there. Okay, anyway. Yeah, I think we're still good to go here for our start. transformer in this set. So we'll use our hot chassis warning light. Set this to the highest restriction.
making a few camera adjustments here. Okay. Everything's good to go. Oh, quick little safety peek. There we go. Going on restricted power here. Hot chassis warning light has come on. See the two lights have come on up at the front. I don't see that any tubes have come on. This one back here may may, may show some light. Yeah. That looks like I can see the, the heater element there. Gotta be careful now because this uh, there's no question that the chassis is, is uh, live on this and quite capable of delivering a shot. I'll take care of that in just a moment. Yeah, I can see the heaters on there. An interesting color in my camera. Look at that one. It's a very bluish color. Okay, so I think we need to fix this uh, red light here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch the power plug around here. Switch it around and the uh, and the light will will go away. Here we go. Guess what? <laughs> Look at that. Okay. So this plug is polarized. It's only going in one way. Now if I turn off the radio, however that is done, there. Because the uh, radio, I turned the switch and the hot chassis light went out. But the radio is on. Now it's on full power. Or at least it's much more power. What What's going on here? Something funny going on here. So look at the light bulb now. Before this light bulb was barely glowing. I certainly saw those elements in the, in the here. Take a look, you know. I mean, they're they're fully bright now. They still have that funny bluish color, don't they? Not to my eye. My eye sees them as the usual orange color. And uh, we're still on restricted power. We're running around 90, 95 volts in supply to the set. But how come these came on when the switch was off? I could certainly understand the hot chassis situation. This is the problem with the hot chassis. Uh, the hot chassis problem. This is the problem with the hot chassis problem. You can make it safe when the radio's off, or when the radio's on, but not both. That requires a little more effort. Well, anyway, the radio seems to be operating. Let's. Uh, Let's have a listen. So I haven't heard a thing out of it yet. Okay, there's no words on here, but that's the tuning. There's a bit of magic eye there. Okay. There we are. No. 
Now look, there's two bands, I'm sure of that. A short wave that goes from 5.5 megahertz all the way up to 20 megahertz. Wow, that's pretty good. That's tone. This, this has to be the band switch then. Yeah. Two positions. Okay. This again, there's no indication. Let me just take a little bit of a closer look here. Let's see if we can spot any indication of what these controls are. So I just look for writing on the wood around the knob. Wow, it's pretty worn, isn't it? From uh, this radio has been well used at some point in its life. But I don't see any words anywhere. I don't see any indicator anywhere. Look at this cool, cool thing here. That's a ship. Reduce the uh, reflections we're getting here. <laughs> that didn't help much, did it? There, that's a little better. All in Germany. There's the meter band, 49 meter band foreign short wave. South American, England, Germany. You know, I don't know if these words ever really meant anything, to be honest with you. I mean, they certainly suggest, yeah, tune around here to pick these things up. American short wave, foreign short wave. Obviously an American radio. in USA, right there. Okay. Let's tune, tune this one. Try the other band now. Oh, you know what? We got this on restricted uh, voltage. Let, let's give it the shooting match here. Give it the give it the works. And it might make the eye work properly. Hmm. It sounds exactly the same on both bands. Interesting sounds. 
uh, clearly there's a short in the, uh, in the capacitor. Ah, yeah. uh, that, you know, I don't know about that particular hum. Power, power supply hum, uh, pretty sure, but... So, I gotta take it out. It's gotta come out. I'll have to take a closer look. And the magic eye... You can see it is working. Kind of unusual looking here. Let's just take a little closer look at it. It's kind of speckly. There. And I don't think it responds to anything, but then the radio's not, apparently not working, but... <laughs> oh, there, it did something. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Fun stuff. Take it out of the cabinet. Check it out. There's my warning light came on as soon as I watch. I'll turn it on. I'll turn it off. So, warning. Hot jazz, eh? more. Oh, let me check something on my own my own power supply here. Good chance to do this. What happens if I turn off the power? Very good. So I turn off my power switches, I'm okay. <laughs> 